Hey, this is Don Cielo, so welcome to the Flavor Podcast, episode one. The Flavor Podcast, sit down interviews with people adding their own tastes in their everyday life. Yo, 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 what's up, what's up, it's Don Silos back with another episode of the Flavor Podcast, sit down interviews with people adding their own taste in everyday life. Now, in today's episode, I got one of my very good friends, Mr. Brandon Avalos. Avalos, introduce yourself, tell the people who you are, what you do. What up, man? I'm Brandon Avalos. I'm from Mexico, and I make clothes, man. Swag, swag. Swag. So tell, tell the people what kind of clothes you do. I make a lot of one-on-one pieces. Uh, I do merchandising, as in screen printing and all that, but I'm more focused on one-on-one pieces. It's a lot of cut and sew. For sure, for sure. So tell the people about your brand. So what is your brand and the message you try to portray with it and the meaning behind the name? So my brand's called Robbed Culture. Uh, it has a pretty deep meaning to it. It's a, it's a long story, but I'll make it short. It's mostly, it's a voice for people who want to be themselves Mm -hmm. you know in a world of trying to be normal or having to be normal or a certain way it's just a voice for them to be themselves basically so So what would you say sparked your interest in fashion uh i mean i guess the early early times of me even seeing anything is like streetwear it's at school all the kids wearing hundreds diamond supply co and whatnot that that mostly caught my attention, and from there just just built up. So, what inspiration did you draw from brands like that in the early days? Uh, like, what was it that like caught your attention? Would you say? Um, I guess the graphics. Uh, since I did a lot of graffiti, mm-hmm. I would draw a lot. I would just you know pay attention to the graphics. Like, oh, okay, that's dope, you know. And that's what drove me to want to do something, you know. I'm like, man, I'll put my own graphics on my shirts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See how that goes. And so do you feel like creativity plays a very pivotal point in um, just like, like the creative process? Yeah. Of making most, clothes? Most definitely. You have to always, you got to stay creative, man. You, looking like everybody else, that ain't really going to yeah, do yeah, anything yeah. for you. you know? So how would you describe your creative process as far as like designing stuff? Uh, I'm just more of a real chill dude. I relax. I have a studio at my house, so I honestly just smoke a joint, just relax, and focus on what I got to make. Lit. Literally. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> so how's this studio? How's it? How is it? Like, describe to people. Like, if somebody walks, like, paint a mental picture of what your studio looks like. Uh, so you walk into my studio and I have my sewing machine like right there to the left. Mm-hmm. I got a TV with a Nintendo, the old school. You got to keep it old school. Yeah, what what games you be smashing on? On Super Nintendo or on fucking Super Mario, high shit. <laughs> <laughs> Super Mario, fucking uh, that go kart game, bro, bro. Mario Kart. I'm I'm a go boss, to bro. I'm a go boss to bro. bro. I'll hit, smash anybody, bro. Hit him with the banana peel one time. Skirt. <laughs> That the yeah. fucking the WWE, uh-huh. I be fucking with that. The Tony Hawk, bro, that shit's hard too. Bruh. Have you never played the Tony Hawk, bro? Bro, the only I remember when we were little, like we got the Nintendo bundle, like that shit, like yeah. the Nintendo sixty four, and it was like it came with like the game too. Yeah, bro, fuck that shit was hard. <laughs> Hella hard. But yeah. What man. did you grow up playing on? Like, what was your go to childhood game? Would you say? Uh, the Diddy Kong game. Diddy Kong, bro. What was that one Crash Crash, Crash Bandicoot? Bandicoot? That, that, too. Yeah, that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That or like what was the other one? Turok. Turok. I don't Remember know. you never heard that game? Wait, which one? That one. It was like um, this dude that looks like Rambo. He's in the jungle busting at everybody. Bro, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you never played that shit. That's yeah, uh, hard, bro. That was like my go-to. Bro, the go-to is GTA though. Now it is classic. Oh yeah, it's always been hell yeah. It's a lot of violence for me. Bro, I, was, <laughs> I remember the first time I played it, I was like in, I think, sixth grade. Doing hella wild shit. Bro, that shit was wild, like hitting that licks. I was like, wild. what the fuck? Bro, that shit's wild, bro. It's bad influence. Yeah, it's yeah, funny yeah. funny shit, though. 
So how long have you been doing your clothes? Um, I've been doing them since 2013. Mm-hmm. So it's like three years now. I believe so. Probably three, four. four. Yeah. Probably be four tomorrow. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> And uh, so in the span of the four years, what has been like one of your most cherished accomplishments, would you say? Going to, um, or having my clothes on Gleesh for Hyro Day. Mm-hmm. That, that was pretty crazy. So for the people that don't know, what is Hyro Day? Hyro Day is a festival in Oakland. They have it every year. Hieroglyphics, the group from Oakland, if you don't know about them, they they host that shit. They make it. It's, it's dope. Everybody comes out, all the... All the Bay Area artists and just a lot of people from around the world, like Glee, she's from mm-hmm. D.C. and shit. So you know, it's just it's a it's a big pot of like just culture, of hey. everything, graffiti, DJing, everything, performing, everything, bro. It's it's fun. I was there last year, saying that I was gonna be in the next year one, because I really wanted to be in it. Like I was, I would always go to them, but I wanted to be a part of it. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And I fucking it just happened. That's and good. Next year, I fucking ended up being on stage with Gleesh and wearing my stuff, so it was pretty crazy. So how important do you think believing in yourself like that, for example? Like, you told yourself you are going to be on stage, and then next year, the following year, you were actually... You accomplished what yeah. you set your mind to, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. It's Man, being... You got to, like, really... You're the only person that's going to tell you, you know, what yeah. you can do and shit. So... Being positive plays a big key role in doing that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you got to speak everything into existence. People don't know, but that's how your brain works. You just got to speak yeah. it into existence and act on it, though. You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. happened, bro. It's not impossible. So what would you say is, like, one of the biggest lessons you learned in the span of the last four years <clears throat> or in life in general that you would say, like, has stuck with you the most? Uh, to keep on going, to keep on going, man, because there's a lot of things that really stop you from doing what you want to do, you know, just, just keep on going. Have you, have you ever had a moment, like, where you felt, like, just giving up? Hell yeah, a lot of times, a lot of times, I can't even, like, it's too many times, bro, that's what I'm saying, you got to keep positive, you got to stay focused, and all that, all those are, like, really big key things, because your life isn't going to be the same, you know, Yeah. a couple months after, or whatever, you know, shit's always going to fucking change, so. So, what's some key points that, that you do, to, that you follow to keep you motivated, to adapt, keep going? Adapt to what's going on, you know, in your way, though, mm-hmm. you know, Keep doing things your own way, but adapt with what's going on and stuff, basically. So how would you say your brand has evolved? Um, it has evolved because I have all the, I have all the quality control mm-hmm. in doing everything now. Since I have a screen printing machine, doing the cut and sew stuff, all that, I could pick whatever fabric, whatever yeah. sweaters, whatever, anything, you know, the color, the placement, everything is just... It's on point now, you know, things are getting super how I wanted them to be. Before, it was like you would pay somebody of what you want to do, and they'll bring you back something that's like, it's, it's kind of what I wanted, but it's not there yet. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's just quality control. So you feel a lot more freedom now? Yeah, since definitely. you do everything yourself. Yeah, less stress-free, too, because, you know, you're doing it how you want mm-hmm. it. So do you have any new pieces that you're currently working on? Uh, like what's your main focus right now? A lot of one-to-one pieces, uh, jackets. There you go. Jackets. I'm trying to do a lot of jackets right now because uh, I feel like a lot of jackets right now are are like headed towards the same direction. And I feel like I could probably like do something to like break that. You know? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Everybody's doing jean jackets and whatnot, but mm-hmm. if you do something totally different, you know, it's not who does it first, it's who does it better. Yeah. Mm, type thing. So how where do you see your brand in the future from this point f- moving forward? Um, I I want to be in runways. I want to be in at Barney's, you know, have a storefront at Barney's and whatnot. Just things like that, you know, I really want to go to towards the higher end of things, mm-hmm. I guess. Which wasn't my plan at first, but. I guess, you know, it just works that way. So, um, so 
Is there a point that you feel like if you reach this point, you'll feel successful? Um. Oh yeah. If I have a like, what's what's a couple milestones you you want to reach? I want to have a storefront in Japan. And why yeah. is that? Why Japan? Out of all locations. Cause people out there honestly have they have uh, how should I say it? they're just more like they acknowledge the creative process or they just acknowledge something that's really been put time into more I feel like because the whole streetwear stuff out there is crazy like yeah, yeah, yeah. the whole scene out there is just wild <laughs> you would see some crazy and everybody looks different mm-hmm. that's the cool part everybody looks like completely different like there's hype beasts and stuff but. Yeah. Most of the population is just, it's their own style and whatnot. How would you say, have you seen any, like, changes in the current streetwear market? Like, as far as competition, like, trends? Like, what would you say is, like, happening right now? Like, the whole culture? Uh, The whole culture is, like, really shifting towards the higher end side, I feel like. After the whole, like, Louis Vuitton Supreme thing. I feel like every, you know, all the streetwear is accepted now into mm-hmm. high end, high end stores or high end brands. They all take inspiration and stuff from streetwear and whatnot. So, I what, feel like what's some what's some brands that you look up to? Um, I like a Cold Wall, Virgil Abloh, of course. He's a genius. Rick Owens, Raf Simmons, for sure. Just a couple, bro. But those are my main ones. So do you have any passions apart from fashion? I like to paint. I like to paint graffiti and uh, acrylic painting. Anything that has to do with my hands. I like I like really like working with my hands for some reason. What do you like about graffiti the most? Like what you, what, what aspect do you like about it? Uh there's a technique to it. I mean, you can't just go up to a wall and like write on it and yeah. like clean. Like you got to it takes technique. It took a lot of years for me to get to where I am, like with graffiti as mm-hmm. well. Man, I used to fucking suck back then. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that 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 whole process is like, it kind of helped me with the whole clothing process because mm-hmm. I seen that if I work at it and whatnot, I seen that I get better and better and better and better, and I'm like, okay, I could apply this to that. So how how important do you feel practice is like in everything that you do? Like for example, you said like. When you first started with graffiti, you weren't the best, but now that you're like a at a good point that you feel so how how important would you say to the people practice is? It's very important, man. Like you can't what was it? The the proper term is like a toy, you know what I mean? The yeah. toy is like just go out and write on something and it's like uh like practice before you go out and do some shit because each tag, like let's say you hit a tag and it's sloppy, nobody's gonna really want to see anything after that. Yeah, no one really cares. But if you hit a clean tag, people gonna look out. People for are you. gonna yeah look out for you and be like, okay, you got swag, and you see it somewhere else, like okay, okay, you getting know, up. <laughs> getting up, that's just how it works. So, what advice would you give to somebody like starting out and whatever they want to do? Uh, I would say to. Um, Really focus on your own vision mm-hmm. and just really make it happen. And what else? What else? I want to say something very important because this shit's crazy, bro. Like making making your dream happen and whatnot. Like that's it's crazy. It's a long journey. You know what I mean, so I want to say something smart. <laughs> 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 I would say. Um, be you that's the most important thing just yeah. to be you and make whatever you like do you feel like having the right people around you is also important most definitely everything it, it all has to do with vibes and stuff so yeah. whoever you bring along whatever vibe they bring in you know that's what you're gonna get and the results are gonna you know you're gonna see that if you hang out with you know, people that aren't doing anything and shit, what are you going to learn from them? Yeah. If you hang out with people who are actually, like, trying to do something or just on a positive mindset, on a positive vibe, and you just go up from there. Mm-hmm. So how how do you feel that you've changed these past couple of years? Uh, I became more aware of, uh, let's say, how should I say, I just became more aware of, like, the bullshit. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? I became aware of, like, the negativity. Mm -hmm. I had to change that, you know? It's positivity. Positive vibes always. You swear. Sure. So, say it's like a 16, 17, 18-year-old watching the, or hearing this audio, and they're looking for, like, some word of advice was, like, that one takeaway that you would want them to take away from all this. Like, if you could go back in time to yourself... What important piece of advice, what would it be and why? To, man, that's hard because I feel like all the lessons that I've learned, they're always good and stuff. You know, we look at them bad, but it's all good stuff. Yeah. I wouldn't really want to change anything, but I would want to tell my past self to to cut the middleman. Yeah. You know, do what you, do your vision, you know, focus on your shit because... Anybody else would come and try to say they want to help, but yeah. it's really just to throw off whatever you're trying to envision. You know? So just stick to what you want to do. You know, it's your world, your rules. You make it. You make it. Exactly. Exactly, brother. So do you do you want to uh, venture into anything else besides fashion? Uh, I want to get into making like abstract art. Mm -hmm. And like sculptures and um, what you call it, furniture, things like that. Kind of, kind of. I just want to just test out what I could do with yeah. with my creativity, different media's and whatnot. So would you say you're more than just a fashion designer? Like, what would you consider yourself as? <clears throat> uh, I always try to tell myself that I wanted to be uncategorized. Like, I just. Uh -huh. I always wanted to be an artist of, like, many mediums. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you meet somebody, what do you tell them? Oh, my my name's Alos, and I'm a... I usually just say that I make clothes and stuff, you know, and I manage Julio, my artist, but all the other stuff is, like, I'm not that good at it, so, you yeah. know, I can't just say, I do this, too. But you got to speak I things into existence, you know? Yeah, that's true. I tell it to myself, though. <laughs> <laughs> I got to tell everybody else. No, nah, bro, I feel like you got to... It's very important to tell... To put things out into the world, you know? Hell yeah. Because, like, for example, when I first started Vital Vintage Goods, like, before I even had it, bro, I would tell people, I'm going to open this store. It's going to be hella dope. I'm going to have yeah, this and this and true, this. Yeah, that's true. And, like, if I put it out there, like, it's, it's like, if I already told somebody, that tells me, like, bro, you got to execute. Yeah, you yeah, got to yeah. make that shit happen now. You're cause, right. Because I, I feel like it's very important to be a person of your word. And uh, if I can't keep my word to myself, true. I'm going to look like a fucking... True. Bum. <laughs> <laughs> true, 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 man. True, that is true. Yeah. But I mean, I don't want to go out and be like, yeah, I make furniture. I don't even know how to make that shit. You know what I mean? Well, like, you could be like, hey, I make fashion, but I'm go one day I'm going to be making furniture. I'm going to be doing this. Or that, yeah. You but know? to describe myself, yeah. like, yeah, I make clothes and stuff. But if they did want to hear, like, oh, what are your future goals? I want to make everything. <laughs> I want to create everything. <laughs> Fuck. So how do you how important do you think social media plays an important role and with the stuff that you do as far as getting your name out there or how do you how do you maneuver and communicate with the with the with the streets So I don't I don't really like count on social media I really just really try to go out and talk mm -hmm. to people face to face have a real relationship with people you know, I feel like that's the best way. Yeah, and why is that? Why would you say that's the best way for you? Because anybody can send a DM. You know, people yeah. that are doing shit, you're, they're getting DMs f fucking from everyone mm -hmm. trying to do some shit, you know what I mean? So, I don't know, it's just better to go where where your interests, where there's other people with the same interests, you know, you go over there and mm -hmm. talk to them. You guys have the same interests. Make some shit work. Yeah. That's how you do it. You like, gotta keep it old school. Yeah, like how would you say it's different, like meeting somebody in person as as opposed to just like through your fucking phone? Because they can't tell who, like how you are as yeah. a person through a damn DM. You don't look like a coof talking about, oh, what's up, check me out. Yeah. I'm sending links. Like so like w like what's some of the way that people, some of the ways that people approach you, like when they, when they hit you in the DMs, like. Cause there's a lot of people that that's the only way they move now, right? Like just hit people in the DM, social media, but they don't understand. Like if you want to do stuff like that, you gotta have some type of courtesy in a way. Like 
they just want to hit people out the cuts like hey yo check this out yeah. just like drop a link not even say nothing yeah, yeah. Sh- like it's weird bro like what type of like how does that portray that person like how does that make how does that make them come across as uh not of interest for sure because if you did have interest you would try a lot more mm-hmm. to want to make something happen you know or at least try to get my attention more with something that's like equally beneficial or something you yeah. know instead of just being like here check my shit out like how here, would you say <laughs> what would be a good like, way bro. to uh to approach some somebody a good way yeah man cuz like like you, you like think about it like anybody could like hit you hey bro i got this or hey bro like what's up like hey like let's link up but what's going to differentiate you from somebody else from the next man um to be honest, I don't really know much about that because, like I said, I really do go out and, like, talk mm-hmm. to all these people. And I feel like even if I didn't, like, get what I wanted when I met the person, at least they know about me at the time. So when I do send them a DM, yeah, that like, oh, it's this dude. He was hella cool. You know, he was in, like, on some groupie shit trying yeah. to get something out of me or some shit. You know, it's like, it just got to be genuine. You know what I mean? Even if it doesn't happen the first time you meet somebody or something, it's like, it all plays out how it's supposed to. So, since you say you've been out, like, actually meeting people, do you say you've, uh, would you say, uh, like, you get you got a better understanding of reading people now? Yeah, you, you have Because, like, like, for example, if you go to an event, there's always going to be people just with, like, yeah. an intention to just get, like, put on or, like, Exactly. Make connections and stuff like. So how would you like? What's what's the type of people that you see like in, in like events that you go to? Um, what do you mean? What do you mean? Cause like, like how do I approach them? Like how do people? Yeah, like like that or like how do people move in like those type of situations? Cause like the, there's some people that are gonna act like hella hot, like high headed. Oh yeah. There's gonna yeah. people that are gonna be like all up on you. Uh, I just try to catch the vibe. I just try to really like analyze what's going on in the room it's, mm-hmm. it may sound weird that's just me but that's how i move i just really just look at the vibe what's going on yeah you know what's what i don't act like any any different i'm always myself and yeah. shit and if i want to meet somebody you know I go up to them like yo what's up there's this and that that's just how it goes it's all about the vibes though L- vibes don't lie yeah like anybody could come up to you and be like blah blah, blah and you'll tell what kind of yeah. vibe he's on what do you say? How, like, what is it that gives all that vibe? Just like a, like a, just like a feeling, or like there's things that, that like a certain way that they move around. Like, uh, I think the way they approach you is like, kind of like put me on. Yeah. Type vibe when it's supposed to be like, maybe you guys meet because this dude's like, oh yeah, he's my partner or something. Just keep it cool and whatnot. Mm-hmm. I feel like just keeping it, just be yourself. Like, people who are themselves, this might sound weird, but people who are themselves can really identify people who are being them. Yeah. Like, other people that are being themselves. Yeah, bro, because it's like, mm-hmm. there's so many, there's so much, like, like we live in the age of social media, right? So everybody wants to just be, like, the next big thing. And, like, I mean, I, I, like, you, like how you said, like, I'm always, but I'm always by my, like, myself, right? And, like, there's people that, they act one way in one certain situation. Yeah. And in another situation, they act like a whole brand new person. Yeah, that's like that's like letting their social media accounts and stuff take over their fucking life. So how do you say how, how important is being yourself is? <clears throat> Man, that's number one. That's that's number one key, to be honest. That's free game right there. Yeah. That's, that's literally what has gotten me to where I'm at right now. You know what I mean? Being yourself is very, very important. Cause and I would say that, too, because, like, at the end of the day, all fakes get exposed in the end, right? Exactly. When they say a real, recognize real, like, that's, that's some real shit. Like, this, like, I, like you meet somebody, like, that, they, like, spazzing and acting hella extra. Like, bro, this nigga hella weird. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this nigga's either on some groupy shit or it's just, yeah, on some weird shit. Yeah. Just keep it chill. Yeah. It's not like we're fucking wild as a you know, people and shit, we're fucking humans. And like the yeah, like the end of the day, sure. everybody's just a human, bro. Like exactly, we're all humans. <laughs> yeah, you got to act up just to impress somebody. Exactly, exactly. So talk about the area that we're in. So like we're in the Central Valley, 
In Tracy, to be exact. Yes, yes. We're in Tracy. How do you feel like the culture is here as opposed to other areas? Uh, It's, it's going. I try, like, uh, I kind of don't really, like, focus on it. Mm -hmm. I really just focus on myself. You know what I mean? Whatever's going on out here and stuff, like, it's cool, man. Keep shit going, but the only way you're going to actually get shit done is being yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, just don't follow, don't follow waves and like. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like a lot of that really does happen out here. Everybody's kind of like trying to follow a certain wave or something. Yeah. Instead of being themselves. How important do you feel like it is to like branch out into other areas? Like not just stay like in your. It's super important. Location or super important because that comes into play with the whole DM thing. Mm. Instead of, instead of sending somebody from Frisco a DM, why not just go where they're going to be at or whatever? Let's say they post something and it's like, oh, I want to meet this dude, you know, yeah. I talk to him. Go to the fucking place. Put in that work, bro. You got to put in work. Like, that's really what it's about, bro. It's putting in work, bro. I, if you know me, if you watch my snaps and shit, bro, like, I fucking, I'm everywhere, bro. I'm fucking constantly driving. <laughs> that shit is, it's tiring, but it's gotten to where... You know, I wanted it pays it to off be. in the end eventually, yeah. right? If you got to take that trip, you better take that trip. Yeah. It is what it is. It is what it is. So, how do you... What's, all, what's some places that you visited out of, like, state and stuff like that or, like, other cities that, like, you've enjoyed? Like, would you say, like, the whole, like, culture... In other places. Well, unfortunately, I can't. I can't be traveling around like out of state and whatnot due to certain things. <laughs> so I like I try to keep it. I try to go out and like really explore the craziest place I've been to so far is New York, of course. Like that's yeah. fucking. I was like eight hour flight. That shit was crazy, and the whole culture there is like. I feel like I was born there, bro. Like I <laughs> as soon as I touched down, bro, it was just it was. Good vibes everywhere. You'll walk into a pizza spot, they're playing Biggie. Yeah. Walk into a bar, they're playing Biggie. Walk into this, and it's like, they're playing old school hip-hop. Like, I feel like that was my, that's my kind of vibe, you yeah. know, so. It's like, it's just good vibes all around. Everybody's dressed how they want to, mm -hmm. bro. Like, since it's a big city, I feel like people are more on, like, I want to be, like, myself instead of. Yeah. So, compare, right? like, a big city to, like, a smaller city. Like, do you feel like somebody in a smaller town... It's gonna have a more difficult time or like struggle compared to somebody in a bigger city. Uh yeah, definitely. Um, it, it puts boundaries on you. Like you know, if you want to look like yourself, you're gonna look kind of weird yeah. in, in a place where everybody looks like the same. Like one they feel another. the specific yeah, it's mode. Like, fuck, it just blocks you. You know, mm -hmm. that's why you gotta get out. So, Get out that box. What type of upbringing did you have? Like, do you do you think your upbringing had a important role in the way that you view life now? Yeah, definitely. Um, I learned a lot of lessons. <laughs> I learned a lot of lessons, especially through this clothing stuff, man. It can really get hectic, and you gotta you gotta play your part, mm -hmm. and you gotta be yourself at all times. And fucking fuck, I lost it. <laughs> I'm say, thinking too much. We say you were a good kid growing up or a bad kid. Like, what kind of kid was you? Uh, I was, I was a weird kid, bro. Like, I swear, I still have <laughs> pictures of me with like green hair, like blue hair, because I would always tell my mom to dye my shit. Like, where'd you grow up? In Hayward. How was a whole culture shift from here to there? Well, I mean, I was I was a youngin over there, so I kind of didn't give a shit. Mm -hmm. All I did was draw. Yeah. Like, literally, since a young age, I just would draw a lot. Draw, draw, draw. That's good. Do you have... What's your, like, favorite childhood memory, would you say? Selling drawings outside of my house with <laughs> my, my best friend, bro. So, but you were trapping drawings? I was trapping drawings at a what young age, bro. Fuck? Like, literally, <laughs> I would just sit down and draw with my partner, LaJoy. Shout out, LaJoy, man. Shout out, LaJoy. Bro, we would just really just draw some shit. I don't know what the fuck we were drawing at. <laughs> just post it outside. Like, because we were on a pretty busy street and whatnot. So, uh -huh. 
we just put up the, the paintings and shit or the drawings there and people would pass by and buy that shit. <laughs> Honestly, I'm pretty sure it was all for like because we're kids and shit. Yeah. You know, like, like what kind of drawings? Like anything specific or just like whatever? Like car drawings and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I was in, I'm hella into cars. I mean, you know what I mean? So I would just draw cars and cars and cars. So you say you're into cars. What kind of cars are you into? Like, are you like the people that like modifying or like rebuilding or like just the cars in general? Uh, cars in general because I mean I've had I've had a I got a BMW was slammed all that shit so I was like really into that. Mm-hmm. My brother's into muscle cars. He got a Camaro. He has a Z28. It's crazy. He has it in the garage sitting. Why, bro? Because he's building it. Like, like what is that he doing? Shit, with like, it? bro, that thing is built from ground up bro like he took the whole damn engine apart shit was black he painted it red like everything bro like so i i respect all kinds of like car cultures i know they don't get along too well like you know they'll be like oh he's a ricer or oh he's this i like it's like art yeah i like all kinds of art i mean if you're an enthusiast of like a certain thing then you respect Mm -hmm. everything around it you know What's one of your favorite models, would you say? My favorite model? YOLO? YOLO? Like models, bro, like car. Oh, I thought you said motto. <laughs> I was like, bro, YOLO, bro. <laughs> yeah, that too, bro. Nah, models. Uh, man, I'm hella into Beamers, even though they give me so much shit. <laughs> beamers are the ones, but right now I'm looking to get a Corvette. I'm more of a Chevy person because of my brother. Yeah. He's he's had Camaros all his life, bro. Like since he was a teen, he got a damn his like first his second car. His second car was a Merrill. And then after that it was just Merrill, Merrill, Came Merrill, over. Merrill, Merrill. It's like Shit. okay. So I just like grew up with that. The whole muscle sad. car scene. Going to side shows and shit. <laughs> bro, I was going to side shows way before all like how it just got popping and before shit. Before side shows were side shows. Bro, like I was going to where when they first had the what is it? The freeway takeover. The first ever freeway takeover, bro. Damn. Where they had a sideshow on the freeway, bro. We bro. were on the way to to Six Flags with the Merrill Damn. boys and all that. That's when my brother, um my brother had Hyphy Muscle. Hyphy Muscle Boys was the crew back then. Which is a huge click now, bro. Like that's a big ass car club, bro. Damn. Like shout out to Fresh too, man. He's he's a close friend. He took over it. But back then my brother my brother and Edgar were running it and that shit was wild, bro. <laughs> I was really young watching Damn. I'm fucking swinging on the freeway. I'm like, oh shit. Bro, I, I, bro. I was watching when I was little, so I grew up in Oakland, right? Yeah. And uh, we used to live in front of like a, a house of gangbangers. And they used to be swinging, bro. <laughs> but it was like before we even knew what, before I knew what a side show was. Like I used to be outside riding the the bike with the training wheels. And you're like, what the fuck's going on? All you, hear, all you see is like, see cars like. Yeah! I was like, what the, f- the fuck's going? On? Drive by. Then my mom's like, get the fuck get inside. inside, get inside. Matate, matate, Fuck. No, yeah, that shit's, that shit's just wild, bro. Yeah. Shit's just dangerous. <laughs> it's just intense, bro. Like, you ever see the videos where people get blapped, like, straight <coughs> smacked? Bro, I've seen people get blapped, bro. Like, straight right next to me, bro. Like, i seen some dude get hit in the face, bro. With a car? With a fucking car, bro. He was, like, trying to smack it, because when they swing, you smack it. Bro, he, like, went down, and that shit just went Boom, like hit him right here. I remember because he flew up and like came back down and everybody's like, oh shit. And all of a sudden, just hella blood just started coming off his cheek. I'm like, oh, fuck, bro. That shit was wild, bro. That was like the wildest shit that That's I seen. Just... I seen niggas get smacked, but like for your shit to just be gushing, like, oh, hell oh, no. Can you imagine? Like, what and he doing? like ran to his car. He was good. It's not. It's not like you gonna tell the like. What the fuck are you gonna tell the go to the hospital? Like, oh, what happened? Got smacked by a car, I was swinging shit. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. That shit is wild. Oh fuck, bro. All right, so that's gonna be it for this interview. Any last words to the people? Um. Be you. Squad. Squad. Where could people find you on social media? You can find me at. My personal one is Avalos, A-V-A-L-O-S, five S's. So it's 
S S S S S. I have A V L A V A L O S S S S S. There you go. So five S's for Avalos and the clothing brand it's called Robbed Culture underscore. No wait. It's Robbed underscore culture. There you go. Exactly just how it's spelled, right? Exactly how it's spelled. R O B B E D underscore culture. I'm saying. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. One last question. What up? What's your favorite taste in music? I like all genres. I like, man, I listen to King Cruel. How how important do you think music is in the whole creative process, would you say? The vibes have to be right, always. And music is a frequency, so... Mm -hmm. Whatever it's letting off is what you're going to catch. You got to get that wavelength right. You got to get that wavelength right. Yeah, bro. Just music that you like is going to get you to do what you like to do. Mm-hmm. Um, I could be listening to some some trap music and then go and listen to some fucking anything. Something completely different. Let's say fucking the Beatles. <laughs> like, the Beatles bro, go hard. They go hard, bro. It's, it's all the vibe. It is, bro. It might not be the same music, but it's like has a certain vibe to it, mm-hmm. I guess. Well, that's going to be it, folks. That's it. Thanks, Avalos, for stopping by. Thank and you, remember, bro. folks. Thank you. Remember, 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 remember to always add some flavor to the mix. It's lit. Yay. Yay. Thank you. Yay.